Hey, welcome once again to the first uh, Canada Ask the Experts webinar. Um, today, being the start of week three, we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that are going on this week in Ontario and a brand new event that's taking place in BC. And as always, this webinar is being recorded and the recording later on this evening will be posted on the first Canada YouTube channel under the uh, playlist for um, Ask the Expert webinars. If at some point during the webinar you do have some questions, you can type them in the chat box and we will get back to you about um, those as we go along. But without much further ado, we're going to get started today. And as it says here in our opening screen, we're going to talk about uh, Ryerson Canadian Pacific uh, regional event taking place in BC starting tomorrow and a couple of other things. So here we go. So just a couple of reminders for when you go to your events, please make sure that you print your team roster from your dashboard. This is applying to the lead coach mentor one and two. Um, if you don't have everybody signed up, you can print out the form, the paper form and uh, staple it to your uh, roster that has the electronic versions for all your team and mentors. Also a reminder, it would be a good idea to bring your robot lockup form. If you haven't ever been to an event, that's the first thing the inspector does is when your robot gets unbagged, they take a glance through your robot lockup form. Um, it would be a good idea to have multiple copies, multiple photocopies of that just in case. Um, that they go to an event with some of the adults on the team or some of the really strong, reliable students that you have as well. Don't forget that you need to bring some tools with you. And lastly, um, and there could be lots more tips or points, but um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, if you're a rookie team and you're going to an event and you don't have a lot of students, you might uh, talk to another team that's a more veteran team that's going to your event and uh, see if they can share some scouting information with you during the course of the event. And most of them are happy to do that. So just as a reminder, um, starting, it says March 13th, but it's a regional event for those people in Ontario that have never been to a regional because we're now in district events for this year and last year. All regional events and the district championships and, uh, are three-day events. Um, technically, this Canadian Pacific Regional is actually a week two event. So if you're looking for uh, webcasts of it and so forth tomorrow uh, or Thursday, um, it will show up in the various sites under week two. The event is taking place in Victoria, British Columbia at the Save On Foods Memorial Center. That's a picture of it there, I believe, on the right. I hope it is because that's what I intended to put there. And there are 32 teams. There are teams from Alberta. There's one team, 1241 is from Ontario. There's a team from Quebec. There's a couple of teams from California. And of course, the majority of teams at the event are from British Columbia. You can watch it through various streaming uh, sites. Um, that would be good. Remember that there's a three hour time difference. So even though they start the matches at 12 o'clock, or sorry, 12, 12 noon Eastern daylight time here in Ontario, the time in BC is actually uh, 9 a.m. So just keep that in mind. So if you're going to check the agenda and when it's taking place, that's when it's taking place. So First Canada President Mark Bredner is there um, and uh, he will be at the Ryerson one once this one finishes. He's flying back. There is a rumor um, that the Premier of BC will be attending. Um, that's Those are never for sure because they might have other things that come up that take up their time emergencies. So hopefully he will be there and enjoy it with the rest of the uh, people in BC and the visitors from the other provinces in California. And there will be many first uh, staff uh, from Ontario, first staff from Ontario that are there to assist with the new event as often happens. And so let's get to today's uh, show. We have with us um, four experts. Kim Cooper, who is the Vice President of Partnerships with First Canada, and she's going to talk about some things at Ryerson, including Friday's breakfast. We have Jan Holder, uh, who works for First Canada, and we have Paulina Fanglin, who is with Team 4001 in Thornhill, and they're going to talk, tell us a little bit about the CAN Code booth and what that's all about with some assistance from Kim and the CAN Code booth this year. Um, this week is at the Ontario Science Centre, which is an event 
that Ryan Lowndes of Team 1310 is going to talk about um, as well. So maybe we can get started and be joined by uh, Kim Cooper, Vice President of Partnerships for First Canada. <laughs> I hey, recognize that little chuckle. Thank you, Paul. So <laughs> yes, that's... obviously the Ryerson event is a big event being in downtown Toronto. Um, and there are some uh, special events that take place there um, that perhaps don't occur at other events. And one of them is this uh, special breakfast on Friday. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So Ryerson University and, and Scotiabank are the co-sponsors of this FRC event on Friday. And every year, or for the past few years, Ryerson has organized a, a special breakfast event. Um, and this year, um, the event is called The Power of Inclusion. And um, this this breakfast is going to be hosted by the Dean of um, of Science and Engineering at Ryerson, uh, Dr. Imogen Ko, who's uh, a real proponent of equity, diversity, and inclusivity. Um, and she's on our Girls in STEM Executive Advisory Council. And she's involved in a number of initiatives to not only um, help uh, support girls in STEM, but for other underserved and, and uh, other communities as well and other populations. So she's going to be hosting this breakfast on Friday. And we have a special, some special guests there. Um, they are called the Afghan Dreamers, and they are first team 7329. And we're, we're absolutely thrilled that this team from Afghanistan, they're a, an all-girls team, and they, they have been working really hard to build a robot, and they will be participating in, uh, at York and uh, at North Bay. But at Ryerson on Friday, they are going to be speaking at this Power of Inclusion breakfast. So we'll be able to hear their story um, firsthand. And for those who aren't familiar with it, they, uh, they, you may have heard on the news last year, they tried to go to first global competition twice, but their, re their visas were rejected. And eventually they were, um, allowed in the US after President Trump intervened. But it was it, it caused a lot of um, media, a bit of a media frenzy, and they were on the news and such. And so at that point, uh, we wanted to welcome them to Canada. And they came here in January. And um, we will be we will be hosting them on Friday at, at the breakfast. And I believe the breakfast is is full now. But uh, you you're welcome to say hello to the girls at the competition and also to say hi to them at York and North Bay. Yes, it's a, it's a great story for sure. Um, we've both spent quite some time, quite a lot of time with them. And uh, mm -hmm. if you do get a chance at Ryerson to talk to the girls, they're very friendly. Um, I know we've had some other um, adults say they were kind of nervous to talk to them because uh, they didn't, they were kind of in awe of them, but they're, they're lovely uh, young people and uh, they, they want to build robots and they want to, you know, change Afghanistan, change the, the lives for girls and boys in Afghanistan with, uh, with STEM. So it's a great story and they will be spending time at Ryerson after the breakfast to, um, see the game being played and to do some of their own scouting to get prepared for their events in New York and uh, North Bay. So yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a very interesting day. And, uh, and I know there's other things going on as well. Uh, Kim, I think there's lots of VIPs coming um, during the course yeah. of the weekend. And yeah, we, yeah. we have a couple of people I know coming from uh, first headquarters as well. So that would be great as well. Yeah. <clears throat> So thank you, Kim, and I know we're going to hear from you again shortly, but uh, that's good information about Ryerson. Okay. Uh, Great. <clears throat> now, one of the things that's new um, that Kim has been heavily involved with is this CanCode booth. Um, <clears throat> this is a picture, I believe, 
uh, from the setup of the event at Durham College um, that you can see on the screen. And uh, we've had a CAN code booth running <clears throat> since Saturday at the uh, Ontario Science Centre. So maybe we can um, hear from Paulina and some from Kim and some from Jan as well about this uh, event. So Paulina, what exactly is the CAN code booth? So the CAN code booth is um, a little booth we have at the Science Center where kids can come in and learn to code. Um, it's been up since Saturday and it's ran, I think, at Durham College too. And it allows kids the opportunity to code a simple game and actually play the game that they code. And they can sign up online um, on Pixelpad and they can access the instruction manuals on First Canada. So they can start at the event and then continue with uh, what they've been doing. Is that the idea? Yes. So, so we register every student with a username and password. And if they don't get to finish their work at the site and finish their work there. And what language, Paulina, are they coding in? Do you remember? They code in Python, which is a little different from what most of them are learning in school, since um, I believe most of them had told us they were learning Scratch. Uh, so this is a little bit different since they're learning Python. So it's really cool that they get to be introduced to a new programming language. Right, and if you've seen both of them, Scratch is a style of programming called blocks, which is you drag and drop blocks into place to, to write the code. Um, and uh, Python is a text-based language where you're, you're actually typing out lines of code that go from top to bottom as, as you go along. Um, maybe, Kim, you can explain, like, because I, I know Paulina and Jan last couple of days have been running the booth and uh, teaching some coding and working with the students, but normally at an event, uh, who actually is there? Yeah, so this, uh, the the activity that we run on the computers, uh, it was developed by a, a small company in Vancouver called Under the GUI, and they had contacted us and said that they would love to partner with us and develop a few um, games based on FIRST Robotics competition themes. Um, so kids could learn coding. So we partnered with them and they developed three different activities, um, which all seem to be uh, quite popular. And we're just actually thrilled with how it's going. And we've had really good feedback. Um, some teachers have, have come up to us and uh, they want to get a hold of the, <laughs> the curriculum guide that we have at these booths, which, um, uh, which we're working on. So we'll eventually, actually we have that now on our, our website as a PDF download and soon uh, the activity will be available on our site so people um, can uh, download it there for free um, very soon, probably in the next few weeks. So it's a really great partnership so far and they're a great team to be working with. So uh, it sounds like it's a good activity. Um, so maybe Jan, you can describe what actually takes place at the booth. Like, what do they do? Do they sit down and is there yeah, a Yeah. So that's when not? a kid, yeah. So when a kid comes into the booth, the first thing they see is a few computers set up on a table, and they can sit down. They can play around with the games which are already open, and they just kind of pick one, and then they ask us, and then um. We give them the booklets, instructions, and we get them started with uh, the PixelPad software. So it's an, so it's an all online software based software. And we have all the code for them with explanations, with detailed images, graphics, and all of the assets of each game are already programmed in. So there's no need to import libraries, images, anything else. They just do the code and it works. And it's really awesome to see kids just light up when they hit when they hit the run button and the graphics and the characters pop up. So, is so how long would a student be sitting there? Do you think, working on it? Uh, the average that we usually have is about ten to fifteen minutes per kid. Mm -hmm. But today we actually had a few kids that sat there for most of of the day, just going through 
every single lesson that we had, and it was really awesome to see. Um, Paulina, do you do 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 you want to talk about one of the kids? Um, one of the little girls there sat there the whole day, wouldn't let her dad take her to any other part of the science center. So she sat <laughs> there and she coded all day with her dad, and she actually completed two of the three games that we had down, and she went through them really quickly. And she also went through debugging. She learned how to debug because we ran into a few problems, but we she overcame it. And she was, every time she ran the program and something worked, she lit up. And every time we asked her if she wanted to keep it, she said yes. And her dad was like, oh, okay, I guess so. <laughs> so we think she might have a bright future in first and as an engineer, so. Very excited. And she said she'll be back tomorrow, which is even better. <laughs> um, and she was the only one like that today. So we had another girl and two more boys that sat there and finished one of the games completely in and out with all the graphics. They even made changes to the game, like the speed and the movement of characters and how hard like the ball hits. Yeah, two of the girls so which was stayed awesome. for half the day, and then two of the boys stayed for the other half. And each time they both finished their games and started trying to improve it by modifying it. So every time um, in the game where we threw a ball and it hit a castle, the boys were trying to figure out a way to lower the castle, and the girls were trying to find a way to limit the amount of balls. It was It was crazy. They were all super excited and trying to figure out how they can make the game even better. Well, it's, it sounds like a great project. And uh, I guess, Kim, um, for those people who haven't been to a first event, there was a soft um, release or opening at the first two events. But is this going to be at every first uh, FRC competition? Yeah, yeah, this, this season for sure at everyone uh, and district champs. What about Ooh. in the rest of the country? Like at the uh, yes, in, in BC uh, and Calgary. Yeah, in BC and Calgary, they're they're having one, and it's the same activity in Montreal. They they did have a coding booth, but the activity was uh, a little bit different, and it was in French. So, oh, it sounds great! It sounds like it's a great initiative. I'm sure uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be. We're going to have. Uh, we I hope. Paulina, that at the events we don't have uh, coaches coming to drag kids away from the coding thing so they can drive their robots. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. I mean, you never know. These kids are very into robotics, so the kids who may not um, be doing too much at the time may think they have 10 minutes to spare and then just sit there the whole day. And of course, so, if people are visiting the Ryerson event and they're not actually a competitor, they can still go into the pits where I, is this going to be in the pits or on the concourse, Kim? Do you know? Uh, at, at Ryerson? Yeah. Uh, in the concourse, uh, in the, near the swag booth, I believe. Oh, perfect. So that lots of students who are visiting on the March break or with their parents or with a, maybe a yeah. parent who's a VIP can sit down and, and do some of this as well. That would be great. That sounds great. Okay, well, thank you very much, Sean, Pauline, and Kim for that. And now um, we're going to hear from Ryan Lowndes from Team 1310, the Runnymede Ravens, um, who is uh, with, along with Melissa Douglas, who's an FSM uh, from First Canada, has been uh, at this event every day. I don't know, Paulina, you're there every day too? In, in I'm there arm. every day. Oh, well. It's a, it's a yeah, good. these two have been with better. me. The entire event so far. So I managed to get down for a couple of days, and uh, it was really interesting. Um, there were some really interesting parts of it. There's been more than just uh, these guys there. There's been a whole crew from um, Runnymede, and that's been fantastic. And uh, we've had different teams there as well. Um, I, I did mention, I think, to Melissa yesterday when I was there that uh, um, – there was a girl being interviewed. I think her name was Sydney, and she was uh, from Ronnie Mead and was spoke so well. It was very impressive. So if you haven't been to these events and talked to the students, you will be surprised at how well spoken they are. So Pauline and 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 uh, Jan are 
uh, obviously well-spoken and you'll kind of find out that Ryan in as well, but uh, there's lots of kids like that. So I guess the big question, Ryan, is how did this mm -hmm. come about? How did this March break robot roundup come up to be about at the Ontario Science Center? So ever since my grade nine year, when I first saw first robotics at the Science Center, I've wanted to get something bigger in there. So I've been back and forth with uh, their head of STEM engagement, uh, Karen, for over a year now. So then back in January, I got an email from her saying, so we've contacted First Canada as well, and we, we want to do something over March break. So then meetings, phone calls, and everything later, we managed to come up with this amazing event. So just to be clear for those people who are listening, um, Ryan is a grade 11 student, is that right, Ryan? Yes. So you took the initiative to um, push for this. So you're not like a uh, an adult yet who's who's thought that it would be a good idea for kids. You're thinking as a teenager, this would be this would be a great thing for other kids and other teenagers to visit and their parents as well. Is that yeah. Right? As for me, um, I didn't really understand the full implications of the program until I got to see it firsthand because you can hear about it in passing but the thing that really gets people in the door is seeing a robot whether that's where they go into on the team or not it draws them in so there's lots of things going on it's not just uh, not just you guys but um, mm -hmm. my understanding is that you're going to be there bright and early tomorrow morning for breakfast TV Yes, so we are there as of 6 a.m. tomorrow um, to be on breakfast television uh, intermittently from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. I believe our first slot is around 6.30, and it's going to be 13.10 and 13.34 and 74 there. So for those of you that don't know, 13.10 is the Running Me Ravens, and 13.34 and 13.74 are teams, two teams at the same school, which is Oakville Trafalgar School in, of course, Oakville. But yeah. there, there are other teams that have been there or are going to be there, is that right? Uh, yeah, so far we've had, obviously, 1334 and 1374 come through. Uh, today we had 771 come through. Uh, Saturday, I mean, Sunday and Monday we had 854 come through. On Thursday we have 1075. And Saturday and Sunday this week, we have 1325 coming by. So what exactly happens when, say, 1310 and 771 are there? What, what's, like, for example, what took place today? So we just find ways um, to try and get the robots to do something together so that there's something always going on. And then we cycle back and forth. But today, for the most part, we managed to keep both robots running at the same time. Other than some minor hiccups and robot problems, we ran almost from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., where we change out with Ryerson. So Ryerson, is uh, as, as the question is, what who else is involved um, from first? You've talked about those teams and then the other groups. So Ryerson is there. Is that Have you had a chance to look at what they're bringing with them? 